Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We will begin with our prayer to be followed by the singing of our national anthem. May we request everyone to put yourselves in the presence of our Lord. God Almighty, thank you for bringing us together to celebrate Cebuano culture and heritage through the sharing of our stories. We need this in this time of uncertainty, O oh God, to remind us of our identity as a people, unique, blessed, and proud. This reminder must inspire us that whatever challenges we face, whether unseen, alien, and treacherous, can always be overcome when we are united in working for the present and the future and the heritage of our children and community. We pray for our present-day heroes who are fighting against the virus and other threats that besiege us today, our own people struggling to overcome these threats, and those who have died, fallen but never forgotten. Dearest God, heal our land. Amen. Mayroon hapon mga Subuanons! Welcome to the Bigi sa Kabilin 2020 Online Activities. An engaging space to appreciate and experience Cebu's culture and heritage. To start our activity for this afternoon, we would like to introduce our host, Ms. Agrifina from Palmgrass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel. We are very happy to welcome all of you today to this month's Gabi Isa Kabilin online event. So Gabi Isa Kabilin is spearheaded by the Ramon Aboitis Foundation to promote Cebu local heritage among the Cebuanos and then to encourage the Cebuanos to visit local museums and heritage sites. So this has been going on for 14 years, but because this year we experienced the pandemic and quarantine, so the Gabilis sa Kabilin uh, participating museums and galleries have decided to hold this online event instead. So, um, uh, so that's why last month 
we started with our first Gabi'i uh, sa Kabilin online event with the journey of um, Magellan uh, uh, to the Philippines. Uh, it was hosted by the University of San Carlos Museum and the Museo Subbo. So this, um, these online activities that we hold every month uh, is also a preparation for the 500 year celebration next year, the 500 years of the circumnavigation uh, of Magellan and or the, the 500 years of the arrival of Magellan to the Philippines, the 500 years of Christianity and the 500 years, and we are very proud of this, the 500 years of the victory of the Battle of Mactan. So today, um, we present to you another journey because our theme the whole year is the journey. The journey. So our 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 event today is another journey. It's the journey of the Cebuano Pali, which we we think nga ang journey nato duna shay kalami ug kabasko ug sa atong kaagi. So we experience kalami sa atong kaagi that made our ancestors baskog. So do na day lami nga makabaskog. Nasay lami nga dili makabaskog. So ang atong i-present karong hapuna to all of you is unsaon nga ang ad ang kalami sa na, na tilawan sa atong mga katigulangan magamit nato karong panahuna para mabaskog ta to fight this pandemic to fight this virus so that we will heal as one through our dishes, through the, 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 the culinary heritage that we have. So watch out also for our question and answer after our presentation. And then watch out for the two sets of trivia uh, quiz and prizes. You will win. You should listen carefully to the presentation or the discuss or the conversation with our resource person, so that you will be able to answer our questions, our trivia quiz at the end of this um, discussion and conversation and presentation. You will be able to win heritage items, exciting heritage items, tasty and delectable uh, food for heroes dishes of our. Um, and it will be delivered to you if you are just in Cebu with our Abdik Paskilat food delivery of Pamgras Hotel. And also, we will also, you will also win uh, a book uh, of Leon Kilat authored by Emil Hostimbaste. And of course, the very exciting of all, the grand prize is the, is the, an overnight stay in our rooms for heroes. Sa Lawak Hamugaway of Pamgras Hotel. So, the simple part is a dynamic view of different influences of different cuisines by, uh, driven by the historical journey of the Cebuano people's interaction with the Malay, the Chinese, the Arab, the Spanish, and Amer Americans with the Japanese over centuries of pre-colonial pre trade and colonization. So to help us today um, to, ha to have more exciting conversations and to have our co cooking demonstration, I would like to introduce to you our um, resource person this afternoon. Our resource person is, we are very happy that he is with us today. We are very proud to have him with us today. So our resource person is a Visayan historian. He, ha he is an author of many books about Visayan history and heritage. And we also have, uh, he also, he also uh, is a, uh, a renowned historian. So he is a full-time professor of the School of Health Sciences of the University of the Philippines, Manila. Help me welcome Sugatan ninyo sa masipang pakpak, di na sa inyong mga balay o di na sa inyong mga food. Sugatan sa masipang pakpak, ang atong speaker karang hapuna, si Professor and Dr. Rolando Burinaga. Professor Rolly, welcome Hi, sa atong event karang hapuna, ang kalami Kabasco Kaagi, the journey of the Cebuano Palate. So he is with us. He is uh, he is uh, on on uh, at the other side of of the Visayas. He is in. So welcome, Professor Rolly. 
We would like you to say a few words. Ah, uh, nalipay kong dako nga gi naimbitar ko anin yung programa sa kabi sa gabi sa kabilin main taog maka ambit liwat sab sad ko sa akong mga nahibawan bahin na yun inyong programa karon. Salamat. So, dahil salamat Professor Oli. We're very happy that you are with us today even with the distance. So, even with the distance, dili ni makapugong na to to converse and to discuss about the exciting things about our culinary heritage. So, I would also like to introduce to you ang nagluto sa atong about 24 dishes that we will show you today. Ang nagluto ay ni He with the the rest of the chefs in Pamgras Kapiha ni mula ni Lumaya. I would like to introduce to you our chef, Chef Nico. Mayang hapon sa kanan tungo tanan. Ako si Chef Nito Nico. Ipakita nako karon ang mga sibuanong putahe. Daghang salamat, Chef Nico. I'm sure nga kaya. You're very excited to sh to to know how these dishes, how our dishes throughout history are being prepared, and Chef, Chef Nico would gladly show it to us. So Cebu is a an island with bodies of water, uh, seas, and rivers. So in pre-Hispanic Cebu, there was an abundant uh, supply of fish and other seafood that had could have been a main source of protein. So we know about these things. And then it, there is a reference, uh, a book with a reference on this, and what our the ancient Filipino, what was the ancient Filipino diet? And this is at our Basahana ni Lumaya at Pamgras. So you should uh, look for this book uh, if napay nabilin. So so this is so uh, you can read this at uh, Basahana ni Lumaya, the ancient Filipino diet. So makita diri. Iko unsa ang gipangatong sa mga ancient. But when the when the Spaniards came to to the to the Philippine shores or to our islands, kadi pa mani Pilipinas sa una, we would like to to ask our resource person about about our facts on what what did what did the 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 Spaniards what did Magellan see and eat in in Cebu. Uh, in 1521. So, pagabot niya, so he was in first. He was in dito uh, dapit selete. In so we would like to, and then he he came to Cebu. So we would like to ask uh, Professor Rolly about what did the Spaniards see? Uh, what food did they see and eat in Cebu? Okay, so uh, the first items that pigafet of the Magellan expedition are noted in Cebu were refreshments of Many dishes, na, which he did not itemize. Na. He only mentioned that they were all made of meat and contained in porcelain platters, most likely mga Chinese ning, uh, porcelain. He also noted many jars of wine made available for the guests. Na. Later in the account, he provided some details. Na. Ra Humabon was eating turtle eggs. It looked sa Pawikan when, he visited, was, when visited by a negotiating team, including Pigafeta. There are also four jars for full of palm wine, tuba, murag pareho ni kadako siguro sa garapon, covered with sweet-smelling herbs, siguro gdaho ni sa gabon, ano? And with four small reeds as straws for drinking water, ah for drinking, ah most likely bagaka ni ngagamit ni lang straw para paginom sa tuba dito sa murag garapon kadako ng mga biso, ano? Pigafeta and company consumed these items offered by Humabon. During a pig ritual sacrifice uh, performed by the Babaylans and following the following food items were noted. Uh, two large dishes of cakes, of rice and mille, uh, bibingka, baked and wrapped in leaves, suman and roast fish, sinugba. The, the chiefs of Cebu offered gifts or bartered wine such as rice, Swine, baboy, fowls, mga manok, o uh, goats, kanding. Murag ni ang nakaon ng mga items ni Magellan sa Cebu, ang uh, baboy, manok, kanding, o uh, uh, bugas sumaya na, rice.
storya ni mo sa unsa ang gipangkaon sa mga Cebuano in the past. So na na day ang ako na na na, na kaya I'm surprised that uh, it's, it's not actually surprising that nagkaon na ubat ang mga uh, kabog ang mga Cebuano sa uh, sa unang panahon so uh, sa ang mga Bisayan pero kini nga kabog wala ni COVID we're sure of that <laughs> wala ni ko wala ni COVID nga kabog so so kanang awo ang atong mga katigulangan we're eating um, so the, uh, Professor Ali mentioned about um, about the what the old what was prepared in that ritual of old women kay in the past ang mga Cebuanos cannot eat pork or cannot eat uh, the meat of a pig unless there was a ritual of women so ing anak ka powerful ang Cebuano women no one can eat the pork unless there's a ritual done by women og old women pa gyud so ato nga nga ritual ang ilang gi-prepare according to Pigafetta was um, rice uh, ang ilang gi-prepare were rice cakes and roast fish so we would like to show you our ang um, unsa ning rice cakes bingka so mo ni siya ang um, one of the dishes nga gi-prepare sa mga sa during that ritual of of old women so kanang mga bingka so made of of brown rice and coconut milk so mona siya ang bingka. So it's still being done nga ang naay traditional way of of baking the bibingka na ay bunot or na ay uling sa imabaw na ay uling sa ilaw. So it's still being done sa bingka sa Mendawe. We're going to to show a video of that uh, later with within the year. So ang roast fish, there is a pangrass we name our sinugbang isda in honor of a Cebu hero, Florencio Gonzalez. So we have Sinugbang is that ni F. Gonzalez. Sinugbang is that ni Florencio Gonzalez. So Florencio Gonzalez was one of the first martyrs of the Cebu Revolution. So even if he was arrested, he was threatened with being killed, but still he did not say anything and he was killed by the Spaniards in the 1898 Cebu Revolution. So we named our dish in honor of them, of him. So aside from that, ang sinugba is another, ang sinugbang babu is another dish um, nga nakitaan sa mga katsila. So here at Pangras, our sinugbang babu is named in honor of another hero, another katipunero, Luis Flores. Sinugbang babu ni Luis Flores. So si Luis Flores was, was the one who, who was the president of the Cebu Katipunan. He was elected at the house, uh, he was appointed or elected at the house of Isidro Gibilondo, Katigulangan sa tag sa Pangras. Ang uh, nag-elect siya as the president of the Katipunan and even when Leon Kilat, the leader of the Cebu Katipunan, was already murdered. He and Arcadio Maxilum continued the revolution until victory. And of course, because of the so many root crops and the, the healing food in our nature, one of the dishes nga we would like to show you is the si, tinunuang, tinunuang utang bisaya. So, utang bisaya ni Lumaya. So, we named this dish in honor of that uh, folklore, uh, according to folklore, was a leader of, of, of Cebu, si Lumaya. So, um, we, it is tinunuan, it has coconut milk, which is also very healthy. And of course, another dish, nga giingon, di mention ni Professor Rolly, is the pork stew, or the linat ang baboy. So, we have our linat ang baboy, we'd like to show you our linat ang baboy. So, you need to, so, muna gikaon sa nilang Magellan, pag-ari nila. So, linat ang baboy, it has its uh, si pork soup. <laughs> and, and of course, another dish. Uh, kay, nakitaan sa mga katsila, dagang kay mga kanding sa Cebu. Ano mo ang kanding ng Manila nga di maligo? <laughs> so, ang kanding, we have our linat ang kanding. Kar ang sa unang panahon, wa pa'y tomato sauce. So, ang atong gisagol ani is a sweaty, at sweaty, or pug. Ingon atong chef na taga San Fernando, ang ilang gisagol sa karaan, sa kal it's not kaldireta na nakaroon, pero ang linat ang kanding, ang gisagol ana is at sweaty, or at sweaties, or at sweaty. So, muna siya, no? And then also, we, uh, uh, see, Professor Rolly mentioned about the 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 drink that Humabon was drinking when Magellan saw him, when Magellan first met him. So, kini nga, 
nga drink it's very popular sa unang panahon and even in the various tingali until today but dirig it's served at uh, hardin dagami sa atong hardin dagami roof deck this is tuba atong tilawan bi bag di na ni bali na man eh so dili na ni siya dili ni bagong dawat so our young people may not know about this so this is tuba and then uh, so we also have ketong giingon ni ni professor nga aron for to 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 nourish the the kuan the mga Spaniards nga who were sick they also refreshments were served to them and then ang giyatag sa ila was the coconut water so we also serve this in palm grass in and we also deliver this atong abtik paskilat delivery the coconut water with uh, the young coconut with water and flesh sa so, mo siya ang healthy dishes healthy dish, dishes sa unang panahon nga nakit-an sa atong mga sa sa mga katsila when they came here sa Cebu so we would like to 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 also show you to to, to we would like to also show you katong niingo si pagafeta nga ang food ko no nga nakit-an nila half cooked og parat very salty and half cooked so this could have been so mauni siya ang kinilaw nga isda. So we would like to show you our kinilaw nga isda ni Dagami. So ang kinilaw nga isda ni Ga Dagami, we named it, it in honor of a hero um, sa Cordova. Sa un Karun ang alan Cordova na. Sa una, he is the hero of Gabi. He's the leader of Gabi. He, may, he, he led an ambush against Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. Uh, barely a uh, barely a month in 1565, when after the after Legazpi uh, tried to occupy Cebu. So we would like to to tell you about this um, research of ours when we trace the Sinulog roots. So when we tried to research uh, about uh, the Sinulog, we found out that Sinulog was actually a traditional Muslim war dance. So we traced the Sinulog all the way to Sulu. And we found out that that um, Cebu, there's this book on the Sultanate of Sulu or the Empire of Sulu, that Sulu was part of the Empire of the Sultanate of Sulu, and that the Tausugs, the um, the people of Sulu, are influenced by the Malay, Chinese, Indian, and Arab cultures. So we would like to show you a video this afternoon, a cooking demo of the flavors of Sulu, because this could have been um, appreciated by the Cebuanos in, in 1521 because so we uh, are we ready with our video so we would like to to we are excited to show you our um, what we saw in Sulu and how we, we are, I actually ate this uh, dish Piangang Mikamlon first in Sulu so the, the people of Sulu are so fond of black coconuts, and this dish has um, has black coconut and, and other healthy ingredients. Like um, so, because uh, so, so right now we are going to show you piangang how the piangang ni Kamlon is prepared and also. years of heritage research has uncovered evidence that Cebu and other islands in the Visayas were under the influence and control of the Sultanate of Sulu before the Spaniards came. One important advisor of Cebu chief Rahu Mabun was a Muslim. So today we present to you the flavors of Sulu that could have been appreciated by the Cebuano Pali. We show you how to prepare an authentic Tausog dish that Pam Gras named in honor of a Moro warrior, Piangang Nikamdon, one of our Moro hero dishes. The use of turmeric in our Cebuano cuisine speaks of how Indian and Arab influences have entered into the Cebuano palate through the Sulu trade routes and influence. Another important ingredient of this dish is the coconut. So we know that coconuts are endemic in the Philippines, in our islands, 
and the coconut has antiviral, antimicrobial, and other medicinal properties. Other spices used in this dish are ginger, lemongrass, garlic, onions, chili peppers that all make the dish tasty and healthy because of their medicinal properties. We showcase to you the preparation of this authentic Sulu dish, Piangang Nikamlon. Chef Nico for showing us sa unsa ang pag fast forward nga pagluto sa Pyanggang ni Kamlon. So Pyanggang is actually a Taoso word and its root word is panggang which is to roast or to to grill. Sa mao to siya no nga ang gigrill gyud ato one of ang gigrill ato ang bird coconut. Ang daghan kay to siya og healthy ingredients nga nga dish na ang coconut, na ang turmeric, na ang ginger, lemongrass. So if you eat it, you would be healthy and strong. Mabaskog ka kay Lami. Oh, we are very happy to tell you nga, when a thousand professor, the one who who guided us to Sulu, came here at palm grass and he tasted the kapiha, the palm grass, piyanggang, piyanggang ni Kamlun, and he said, it's so delicious and it's so tasty and more tasty than the original. Pwede ba na siya? Tastier than the original. Congrats, Chef, ha? It's tastier than the original. Maayong hapon di ay sa ni Professor Darwin Absari, who could be watching right now, the Tausog Professor of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, who gave us this recipe of the Tausog, this authentic Tausog dish. So, Mauna siya ang one of the dishes that would have been tasted by our, by our, by, by our Cebuano ancestors. So, we also know that Cebu had a pre-colonial trade with, with the Chinese. And be, uh, because the Chinese, when they came here, Cebu was also the center of trade in these parts of, of the islands. So, because um, the, Cebu, uh, the Chinese came here uh, to have trade with us, and they would stay for a while to wait for favorable winds. So, kana favorable winds before they, uh, for them to sail back to China. So, this this fact is shared with us with our another consultant historian, Professor Jobbers Versales. This is in the book, uh, The Chinese in the Philippines, or The Chinese uh, in the Philippines. So, uh, we would like to show you a dish with, um, with the influence of the Chinese. So, a noodle dish, uh, bam i ni Lucio Herrera. So, bam i is a Cebuano noodle dish that is influenced by the Chinese. And we named it in honor of a Grimio de Chino, a, a Chinese who married, who married a Cebuana and became one of the leaders of the Cebu Katipunan. He was the treasurer of war of the Cebu Katipunan, Lucio Herrera. Lucio Herrera Oi Chihun. So we are very happy to show you that dish. So now we would like. So we know that from history, um, Magellan came here, but then the Spaniards were defeated in the Battle of Mactan. Kay iso kayo silang lapulapo. Um, they were able to defeat the Spaniards. They would not want to pay tribute to the Spaniards, so they 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 drove away the Spaniards. They went back to some mga survivors went back to Spain. But 44 years after, the Spaniards came back in 1565. So, um, in 1565, nibalik si another conqueror na si Miguel Lopez de Ligaspi. So, of course, sa katunga time, so we are going to have another question for Professor regarding Miguel Lopez de Ligaspi. We would like to, to ask Professor Rolly, uh, what could have, what were the impressions of of the Spaniards, 
on Visayan and Cebuano food upon early Spanish occupation. So, unsa may nakitaan nilang Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, mga Spanish friars, unsa ilang ilang nakita nga, unsa yung gikaon, unsa yung mga kanang gikaon sa mga mga Cebuano at itong time. So, Professor Rolly, you would like to, na na si Professor, so you would like to ask you kung unsa ni siya. Okay, ang uh, sa Cebu, ang ang Ilang gipangitan niya to, nangita gid sila og rice, na. Pero kay murag gipalisdan sila sa tag, taga Cebu, nya murag na, nag-introduce sila sa pagtanom og uh, mais. So mao na ni karon nga hasta karon panahon na ang mga Cebuano na himo na nila nga nga alternative nga staple ang mais para sa pagkaon, na. Pero dili lang mais ang ilang gi-introduce uh, sa mga Cebuano at the time, uh, ang kakao uh, ilas ang gidalangan ni sa Pilipinas para doon na natay chocolate and uh, most important of all adobo na is perhaps the most visible uh, Spanish influence in the Cebuano cuisine it is now a common method of cooking pork and uh, chicken na ilas ang gidala ang pagluto sa kaldereta uh, lechon nga uh, iskabeche uh, paella and uh, as, as a form of accommodation sa mga Spanish uh, uh, colonizers, ang atong tuba, ila na sa ang gisagulan o tsokolate na himo na ni nga kutil. Mention ni Professor Rolino nga, kanang when, they, uh, when we discussed with him a, a few days back, nga ang, ang sweetener sa mga Cebuano at itong time sa mga Visayan is kanang wala pa man asukar sa before the Spaniards came, so it is dugos okay. or honey. Mauna siya. Uh, it's also very healthy because this sweetener is from is from nature, from the bees, and from different flowers and and and, and pla from from different flowers of plants. So this uh, sweetener is very healthy. It's honey, so we use it for our um, we use it for our healthy drinks and healthy dishes. Mona siya ang dugos. So dugos, dugos is honey. <laughs> honey is so sweet. <laughs> so Unsa may opposite sa sweet, so on salty the side. So, si si Professor uh, Rolly and Professor Jobbers were sharing about this. Um, unsa ang ang traditional, unsa ang karaan nga asin nga gigamit sa atong mga sebuano sa unang panahon. So sa unang panahon, there was wala pa kanang salt granules. Ang asin sa una tibuok na asin. So you would like to show you our tibuok na asin tibuok sa kulon sa kon. So mo ni ilang gamiton sa una. So walay salt and pepper nga kanang sa una sa mga lamisa. O gani ang inang gisulti sa sa katong mga references ni Father Alcina nga ang kada usa nila na ing aning tibuok nga asin and it would be up to what they desire kung unsa kaparat ang ilang ibutang sa ilang dish. So mo na siya no nga kanang Mona siya nga, ang kininga asin, it is in our palm grass sinugatan gifts from Cebu. You can actually buy it from us. So, kanang, it is a heritage food item nga we need to buy it from our kanang, kanang fellows, Visayans, nga ang naghimo pa na until karon ang mga taga Bohol. And then, it's a dying tradition according to another heritage uh, and museum um, uh, a fr a from a um, friend from the museum na kinanglan gid ni siya nato kanang isupport ang atong mga fellow Visayan who are still making this salt so ang mga kuan mga ningon si si professor ganina nga ang ang mais is kanang ang atong staple food sa una before the spaniards came was uh millet or kabog so dawa so millet or kabog ang 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 staple food sa mga Cebuano sa una kabog dawa millet mo na siya pero when the Spaniards came ilang gi-introduce in in mga 1600 1700 1600 1700 1700s gi-introduce nila ang mais kay didto sa Luzon di siya matubo pero matubo siya dire sa Cebu so ang mais 
ah, gihimo sa dila nga drink. So, naimong staple food later ang mais, pero ang original na staple food nato ang millet or kabog. So, we may, uh, the Cebuanos made a drink out of the, of the mais, so it becomes kapi mais, and we also serve this at palm grass, kapihan ni Milimaya. We also deliver this to our Abtik Paskilat food delivery. And of course, because kanang ang atong mga young people karon likes uh, mga frap and cold drinks, so we made a, a frap out of the kapi mais. So we have our kapi mais frap. Lami kayo siya. Instead of espresso na kapi, we use the kapi mais. You need to taste it. So, mao na siya nung naagihapon influence ang mga Spaniards sa mga sa atong sa mga Cebuano even if we know from history na they they left Cebu in 1569 kaya sila pa kan sa mga Cebuano that Cebuanos kay, from a very prosperous nga trading centers as ang Cebu na di down ang di down ang kuha ni down ang ni down ang economy sa Cebu ang mga Cebuanos would not produce enough food to feed the Spaniards and they block supplies coming in from the rest of the island. So that's according to another historian, William Henry Scott um, uh, from Blair and Robertson. So Mona Shanung, uh, they left Cebu, they went to Panay and then in 1571, um, the, um, in 1571, um, center of the, of the, of the uh, Spanish colonial, colonial government is now Manila. So, ang nabilin din sa Cebu are mostly natives, Chinese, Chinese and Chinese mestizos, and a, a few Spanish nga families, Gamay Rakaayo and Spanish friars. So, I would like to ask again, so, uh, Professor um, Professor Raleigh, about the Spanish influence of, of the, the, the influence of the Spaniards to, to the Cebuano Christine. What is the Spanish influence in the Cebuano cuisine? Okay, sa sa I mentioned earlier, mao na na nga ang adobo, dunata caldereta, iskabitche, mora oga, paella. Mao ni karon ang mora atong na gamit na karon na na tong a pagluto sa atong mga pagkaon. Uh, sa Cebu o din sa Visayas. Um, this um, this uh, dishes nga introduced sa mga uh, Spaniards, like of course, ang cacao. We, it, it is uh, in mga 1600s, the, ang cacao was introduced in 1670s, the cacao was introduced in, in our islands. According to Professor Kuyawan kayo ang mga pari ani mo inom because this is considered, ang cacao is considered to be an aphrodisiac. So, hangtod ka rin ba? Kakao, akong naibawaan ang chocolate, chocolates are antidepressant. It's kanang kung, kung mag-uul ka. But then we present to you our kining mga tabliya. So, mani ang kanang tabliya nga gi-introduce sa mga, ang cacao nga gi-introduce sa mga, mga katsila. So we made this tablia into a drink, and this is now the sikwati. So ang sikwati, kano mang muingon sila, masikwati yun ka, ay kaibatirol di ay, para mulami ang sikwati, you, needed, you need to mix it properly with a batirol. Sikwati hon yun. So, and then we also made out of the sikwati, I mean out of the tablia, our best seller cake. So it is the tablia cake. And when, when someone, uh, when we had a cooking demo of this a, a, a few months back, the one who tasted it said, this tastes like a food for the brokenhearted. Because when you taste it, when you eat it, mawala imong broken heart. So, murag ako, dili ako desya, prof, professor Rolly desya, ako desya kay kung brokenhearted ka, Ugmukaon ka, mawag tangi mong broken heart. <laughs> so, mawagaon <laughs> tangi. <laughs> so, karon, so mo na ang, ang giingon ni Professor, no? Like, ang, ang, ang cacao, then ang paella. From Mexico, maday ni siyang 
pag pronounce ana is paella listen kay pag pronounce ang mga spanish or mexican dish so we also have our we will show to you our paella ni ho inocencio honquera so it is a, a rice a spanish rice dish with seafood with squid and we can have chicken with it or chorizo so this dish uh, it is served in our kapihan ni lumaya ang ang paella ni Inocencio Honquera and we named this in honor of a Spanish governor na even if he was a Spaniard he built the first theater of Cebu and he worked with Cebuano Katipuneros who, uh, who with Cebuanos who later became Cebuano Katipuneros like Florencio Gonzalez so and our street here at Palmgrass is also named in honor of him he built the first theater of Cebu chapter Honquera so now another uh, Spanish attributed di dish is the adobo so the, the, the Cebuano version of adobo is the humba. So we would like to show you a demonstration of, of ni, Chef Nico of how this humba, humba ni maximum, the Cebuano version of adobo is being cooked or prepared. So humba is a favorite food of Cebuanos and according to um, some accounts, Pork is a favorite of the Asians. So we, we want to show you our video at the cooking demonstration by Chef Nico of the Humba ni Maxilom. Palm grass has a mission of unearthing and preserving Cebuano culture and heritage. This is the reason why we keep our Cebuano heroes alive by dedicating our best and dishes in honor of them. Humba ni Maxilum, one of Bamgrass' bestseller dishes named in honor of Cebu hero, General Arcadio Maxilum. Humba is a pork dish with Spanish and Chinese influence. It is the Cebuano version of adobo. An adobo is a term with Spanish origin, adobar, which means to marinate in vinegar, salt, garlic, and pepper. Cebu also had pre-colonial trade with the Chinese and the Chinese influence in the humba can be seen in the use of fermented black beans and its sweet taste. The soy sauce also has Chinese origin. Other ingredients are the onions, azucenas, and bananas. Onions are a common ingredient of Spanish cuisine. So the wok or caja used in cooking the humba also is of Chinese origin. The meat is simmered over low fire to soften it. So some say humba means hum, humo, and ba, baboy or pork. So it's humok na baboy or soft pork. We named this dish in honor of Cebu hero, General Arcadio Maxilum who led the Cebu Revolution to victory. We present to you Humba ni Maxilum, a dish as tasty as Cebu's victory against its colonizer. To cook the Cebuano favorite dish our bestseller humba ni maxilum so we would also like to thank this the author of this book uh miss luella alex for for uh being a reference of our research on the humba that and then she she mentioned in this book and this is this book is is it is uh, available at our at palm grass basahana ni lumaya and this book mentioned that um Humba has um, Spanish and Chinese influence, and the Chinese influ influence in the humba, as as already mentioned in the video, is the Chinese influence influence of the dish is the 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 use of the wok or kaha. So wok is from China, and also the soy sauce is from China, and the fermented black beans is from China. So mo na ang Spanish. Uh, 
term adobo, it's, of course, it's a Spanish to marinate. So, Mona Shano, we named the dish in honor of a hero, nga si uh, General Arcadio Maxilum, because uh, ang kadaugan, the victory of the revolution is as tasty as the humba. And same as the process in cooking the humba, there is no shortcut to victory. So, you need to simmer it, you need to boil it, you, know, you need to painstick, painstakingly prepare it so that you will create a tasty dish and that's the freedom of Cebu from Spanish colonial rule. So we were freed from the Spaniards on December 24, 1898. I mean, our Katiponeros won victory against the Spaniards. We're victorious against the Spaniards. And then so, um, after, uh, after a few days, they had this celebration at the at the, at the Cebu Cathedral, a Thanksgiving Mass to celebrate the victory of the revolution with Luis Flores, General Alcadio Maxilum. And so, after, but then, after a few months, on February, just two months, so, ilan ang Cebu at nga time? The, the Spaniards already were driven away from Cebu. But a few months after, uh, on, this, on February 1899, Another colonizer came, and this was, and these were the Americans. So the United States of America became our second colonizer, and they occupied Cebu on February in February 1899. So now you would like to to ask. Um, so ang um, American, um, the Americans has kanang ask yung influence sa mga Americans or until today our young people are are. Our young people's taste buds are, are so influenced by American cuisine. So you would like to ask um, for our historian, Professor um, Raleigh, what is the impact of American colonization to the Cebuano palate? Okay, so uh, coffee with milk and bread for breakfast became the most visible influence of the American occupation on the Cebuano palate. So kanang... Uh, these were added to or replaced the traditional breakfast items of rice, tinola, paksiw and orbuad, and tuba in farming and uh, fishing communities. Kara, ko na karon, duna na tay uh, coffee with milk and bread for breakfast. The, the Americans also introduced later hamburgers, fries, soda drinks, and uh, pizza. And the uh, one impact of the uh, American occupation was ang atong uh, native drink, tuba. Uh, we accommodated the Spaniards, gisagula na tong chocolate, so nahimo na tong kutil, pag abot sa Amerikano, doon na po tayo gi-accommodate, doon na na yung chocolate, gidugangan pa na to, itlog, o ang gatas, ang atong kutil karong panahon na. So, um, Kuan, so, uh, mauna siya ang journey sa Cebuano Palate, so, when you have, uh, contacts with other nationalities and other influences. So we add to our dishes. So we would like to present to you the bread, the version of bread of Pangras. We named our bread of this month in honor of our hero, Leon Kilat. So this bread is Pani Leon. And then, of course, ang Pani Leon has red inside it. It's strawberry with cream cheese. So what I shall do, this is in honor of 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 our hero who will have a birthday today, I mean, not in this Monday, on he will have his 147th seventh birthday on, uh, on on Monday, and this on that day also we are going to to celebrate um, how to launch this book by Cebuano children in the our, our children, um, the children in our Historia workshop, um, the children of the Historia workshop wrote a book on Leon Kilap. Uh, si Leon Kilat ang Sigbin. So another, another, uh, another uh, dish, uh, another food item that is influenced and is very much uh, patronized by our young people is the burger. So we also have a burger here at Palm Grass. So burger with French fries. So mawala siya ang usa sa mga dishes nga ganahan kayo atong mga young people. And also also, uh, another uh, dish uh, influenced by the Americans is the salad, which is uh, with litos. So it's different from the utan bisaya, but of course we're still biased. So 
this also is also tasty. We have our Caesar salad, so with with sun dried tomatoes with and show uh, unsa pagani ni chef ang soda na. <laughs> so so wala siya ang Caesar salad. So we also have our um, version of the pizza. So we always want to have the Cebuano ingredients in our, even if it's a Western dish, we want to have kamungay, other vegetables in our dish. So we have malungay bits in that pizza. It's lunhao pizza. Lunhao is a Cebuano word for green. So mona siya ato pizza. Lami na siya. Kailang Diri na ka makatilaw og lami nga aw kamunggay nga pizza. <laughs> so, mo na siya no ang influence of the Americans then, but the, um so diri ang mga Americans until mga 1940s and even until karon grabe ang influence sa mga Americans. But uh, after after the 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 colonization um even during the uh, American colonization, na nasad lain invade sa sa Pilipinas agmauna siya ang Japanese so i would like to ask um i would we would like to ask a uh, professor um Rolly about did the japanese uh, occupation or the did, did the japanese presence have an influence to Cebuano cuisine okay murag ang uh, ang usa nga uh, item nga major item nga na introduce sa uh, mga japanese sa atong uh, uh, Cebuano cuisine mga ang Taosyo o misi or uh, salted soybeans na kini nga para sa ato appetizer or ingredient of some food items. Pero para sa mga hapon kanyang to, next to rice, maon ang pinaka-importante nga component sa ilang diet, uh, salted soybean. So, uh, Mona Shenong, we would like to show you a photo of the soy, salted uh, soybeans. Mona siya ang taosyo. Kung ang salted black beans sa China, ang salted salted soybeans is from Japan. So, Mona siya. So, according to Professor Rolly, Mona ang kanoon sa mga Japanese soldiers um, kuyog sa ilang rice. So, until karuna pa na diri sa, sa, sa Cebu and the Philippines. But we also know that Gamay ra at nga time ang influence sa mga Hapon kaya there were only a few years here and we hated the Japanese so much at that time. But karon we have dishes na Japanese cuisine that most Cebuanos like, like some uh, ay ganahan og sushi, sashimi, ramen. So those are um, some Japanese dishes na being uh, patronized now by some Cebuanos. So now we are we we go into we. We try to look back sa atong mga cuisine, sa journey of our Cebuano palate, and we would like to 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 kung, we would like to know kung ang sa ato pang history, uh, unsa man ang makahimsog nga nga mga ingredients sa Cebuano cuisine. And I also would like to uh, ask uh, our professor um, of about the health um, about the benefits of kind of relieving the old uh, ingredients or the traditional Cebuano dishes. Uh, so what what are the healthy ingredients in the pre-colonial and, and traditional Cebuano cuisine? So that would help us in this pandemic. Okay, so uh, uh, apart from Tuba, which the members of the Magellan Expedition drank in Humonhon, Limasawa, and Cebu, they also availed of lamao, soft meat, and uh, water of young coconut or silot. So, uh, sa humunhon, Magellan gave coconut water with his hand every morning to the sick members of his crew until they recuperated. And after the cross planting on Limasawa Hill on the afternoon of Easter Sunday, 1521, they also refreshed themselves with young coconuts and water when they had climbed down and reached the beach. Sa atong panahon karon it has been established by science that coconut oil and related products have antiviral properties that can disable the coronavirus and related viruses that in enter or infect our bodies. At a time when there is still no drug and vaccine against COVID-19 during this pandemic, the consumption of coconut products may yet provide our people strong biological defense against this virus. Sanglit. 
tagay na o panglamaw na ta? Um, we are we are very happy to know nga we naalar the idea sa atong sa atong um, mga falibot ang ang usa sa maka prevent or makatambal sa sa COVID-19 because last week we knew uh, there is a new story that the the prisoners in the provincial jail now who had covid only to they took uh, virgin coconut oil for a few days and they were healed of of they were cured of the covid and then others who also took it um, who, who did not have yet covid also did not get they were not infected by the covid 19. so we also invite you to 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 read this book um conquest and pestilence in in the early Spanish Philippines. So this book has um, some accounts of unsa tong mga sakit sa early Spanish nga, 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 nga Philippines. And then there were also discussions about um, dili pariha ang mga dili sa Philippines earlier. They were so strong. Ilang immune system were strong. Di sila pariha ka-affected sa ubang colonies of Spain. Kung daghang ka na sakit sa ubang colonies of Spain, ang, ang early nga mga Cebuanos or early Filipinos had strong immune system. So it's because of the coconut kay daghang kay lubi, dili kitkit na ka lubi. So bisan kung ato mga dishes, mga natugtuno, and then we have coconut water to refresh us. So these are all health-boosting uh, ingredients or th these are health boosting food. So the, the, the young coconuts as mentioned by Professor Rolly, the coconut milk and honey are all healthy ingredients. Ginger, lemongrass, turmeric, garlic, onions, these are healthy ingredients nga we should all use and for us to have healthier, um, uh, to have stronger immune system to fight against the virus. So we are very, uh, so right now, please prepare your questions for Professor Rolly. We would like to welcome your questions after we, we discuss with, uh, 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 after we have this exciting trivia quiz with prizes. So we have, we are now in our next, uh, uh, part of the our our event, which is very exciting because she would be winning. Um, uh, we, you would be winning the the prizes, exciting prizes, when you are able to answer the questions. So we have uh, Pam Grass has four questions for you, and also four different sets of prizes with the grand prize as the overnight stay in the Lawak Kamugaway, in the Rooms for Heroes. So we would like to give you our questions. Get ready for to answer the questions because the first one who would be able to answer the questions would win the exciting prizes. So I'm sure that you were listening to our discussion. So the first question is, um, what was the staple food in Cebu in 1521. So, in 1521, pag abot sa mga katsila, na ay staple food ang Cebu. So, you need to answer this question so that you will be able to win the prize. And the prize is, you choose between, it's a food for heroes dish. So, you choose between a fish dish, which is Linarang Million Kilat, named in honor of our hero who will have this birthday on, on Monday, and we, we are inviting you to join our celebration at Pamgras Hotel Page for the birthday of, uh, of General Leon Kilat. So, Linaran Leon Kilat, and the other dish is a pork dish. It's a with Spanish uh, influence, Lichon de Carahay ni Juliana. Juliana is the wife of Candido Padilla, and she was one of the few women leaders of the revolution. So, we named this dish in honor of her. So, you need to answer this question what was the staple food of in Cebu in 1521. So you remember that, so you type your answers to, the, to that question. And this comes with a free delivery. So I guess this is just for Cebuanos or, or those who would come to Cebu in a few days. And then you will be able to have this. So we, our priority winner for this, this question is a Cebuano who lives within uh, Metro Cebu or Mandawe and Cebu City, uh, or those who would visit uh, during the GCQ or, or MGCQ, so you will have this free dish. And we can also deliver it to us or our Abdik Paskilat food delivery. So that's our first question. 
So the next trivia question. So our next question is, um, it's about the humba. So our question is, name two ingredients in the humba dish that have Chinese origin. So of course, you were if you were listening to me and if you were listening to the video, you were if you watched the video, you would know the two ingredients in the humba that have Chinese influence. So, ang atong prize para ani is our heritage item from our gifts from Cebu, sinugatan, palm grass gifts from Cebu. Two, two items. You will have two items because there are two dishes, uh, two food, two answer, I mean, two ingredients. So, we have, we have, we will, you will be rewarded with a coconut purse, coconut coin purse made by Cebuano crops, crops people. And, and this, uh, native musical instrument kubing made, made for us by our Tibuli brothers. So we, when we went to Tibuli to trace the roots of of our our pre-colonial jewelry, <laughs> we this we, kubing is um, uh, made for us by that by some Tibuli uh, brothers. So name the dish, the two uh, name the two ingredients in the humba that have. Chinese origin. So that's the second question. So you need to type your answers for you to win this. Beautiful heritage items from Sinugatan Gifts from Cebu. Our next question, our third question. So, Kine, this is an, an exciting uh, question. <laughs> the, so when, when, when Magellan came to Cebu, uh, he met Raha Humabun for the first time. So the question is, what beverage was Raha Humabun drinking when Magellan first met him? So he was in the in front of his the Pigafetta term bit as his Magellan's palace, and then and then he was drinking there with a jar with straw and reed. It's a uh, stem of a plant. Mo a straw for that drink. So what drink was that? So the, if you are able to answer this question, you would win our book in honor of a book about the about Leon Kilat. It is the author is Emil Hostimbasti. So Leon Kilat, the untold story of the Cebu Revolution. You will have this prize if you are able to answer this question. So this is a book in the Basan and Lumaya and published by Pamgrass and Cresty Abril Incorporated. So this is the question. What beverage was Raha Humabun drinking when Magellan first met him? So you should type your answers. So we come now to the grand prize of this trivia quiz. So the fourth question we would like to ask you, you, uh, you, you we would like you to, to prepare yourselves for the last question. This is a this is the question. So we have this demo about a Tauso dish now because um, we discovered that Cebu was influenced by the Sultanate of Sulu in 1521 or before that. Uh, Rahu Mabun's advisor was a Muslim, so we show we show we showed you we we showcased to you the preparation of this Tauso dish. So the question is: Name three boosting ingredient, uh, health boosting ingredients in the Tauso dish, Pyongyang. Tulu ka ingredients sa Tauso dish. Nga taghan ka ayog ingredients nga nga health boosting ang Pyongyang, but we ask you only three ingredients nga makahimsog so ang price is a lawak hamugaway a room for hero an overnight stay in our dindot kayo and very luxurious nga lawak hamugaway you will be uh, you will have comforts here you will have a respite after so many months a uh, four months of being just staying at home so you will come you will be able to win this prize uh, Lawak Hamugawai. So, those are our questions. Uh, those are our trivia questions. And so now we, we go to our. We would like to show you um, a video by Gabi Sakabilin uh, about the Cebuano taste, about how the Cebuano taste and food choices are reflective 
of who we are as a people. So we present, uh, Gabi Sakabirin would present to you this video about the Cebuano taste. And we are what or how we eat. The Cebuano and his food. From the ingredients we choose, the way we cook or prepare our food, the taste and the way we eat them speaks so much about who we are as Cebuanos. It always starts with the basic, rice. It's the staple. For without rice or humay, or on lean days, corn or maize, not even a feast could the Cebuano feel satisfied. For more than just a cereal, the background against which all dishes are set, rice provides the contrast of all Cebuano food and taste. He brings his rice everywhere he goes. Puso is a unique way of handling rice, making rice handy for carrying cooked rice to just about anywhere. It is coconut leaves, formed into receptacles, usually heart-shaped, thus the name puso likened to the banana blossom. In it, grains are placed and boiled. Puso comes in different sizes and other shapes than the kinasi, such as pinaki. The Sabuano looks around him, to nature, to the provider of his food. He loves his food fresh, and so for him, the best way to handle food from the source is to do as little as possible. Fresh from the catch to the plate or the pot and to add as little as possible. Usually added are vegetables, which comes a plenty. Kamungay, kangkong, sayote, kalabasa puti or pula, eggplant, string beans, ampalaya, carrots, and cabbage. He either wants to eat his catch uncooked, like the kinilaw, fresh raw fish cleaned, sliced, and cooked in pure coconut vinegar and seasoned with ginger, onions, tomatoes, and coconut milk. Or he cooks his food in the simplest method, like the tinuwa, where food is mildly soured with tomatoes, the counterpart of sinigang, the national stew or soup dish. The two dishes are a testament to the bounty of the Visayan Sea, which attests a variety of fish. The Cebuanos, who are so close to sea and land, demand for freshness and not more the pristine quality of what nature has offered him. But practicality also dictates he stores food that will last him for days or save him from the rainy days. The very popular Sabuano adobo, because it is different from the saucy adobo of other regions in the country, could last for days or weeks by cooking it until fat is rendered and the final dish covered in lard. In the expression, natulog sa iyang kaugalingong mantika. Inununan too is fish that could last a few days because it is cooked in clay pot with vinegar, garlic, and salt. Of course, there is buwat or dried fish. Also, ginamos or salted small fish. And kasahos or jerky. Even the chicharon or crispy pork. And certainly, food is not only made to last. It must never be wasted. As much as possible, all other parts must also be made consumable. Take for instance, the famous Cebulachon, the centerpiece of the Cebuano's table during the fiesta or big celebrations. The secret to the best lechon in the country lies in the preparation of the carcass of the pig. It is seasoned with rich condiments and stuffed with spices and slowly roasted in low fire. The taste is such that it does not require a separate sauce in the eating. The best parts are offered to the guests. But for those who do not reach the lechon in time, there are the pork entrails, or ginabot, the liver, or atay, and the blood for dugo-dugo. And when lechon has not been wholly consumed several hours or a day after, it can be recooked to another dish like paksil or prechon. The sabuanas initially were not dessert folks. What constitutes or substitutes for dessert then were fruits a mini variety of which grows in the island. Saging or banana, nangka or jackfruit, papaya, guyaban, seneguelas, 
coconut, and the most popular Cebu mangoes. Cebu also has produced various delicacies from north to south of the island to appease that sweet tooth. In northern Cebu, there is the Pintos of Bogo. In the Loan, titays make otap and rosquillos. Mandawe for its masarial or peanut delicacy, tagaktak, a starch-based sweet, and bibingka or rice cake. In the south, the Ampau or rice krispies and bukarilyo of karkar, torta of dalaget and argao which uses tuba instead of yeast to make the dough rice, and in Hinatilan, palagsing, similar to the suman and budbod wrapped in buli or buri palm. And like the rest of the country, Cebu, under centuries of colonization and in contact with other cultures, has definitely absorbed foreign influences in food. The two biggest influences in Cebuano food is Chinese and Spanish. From Spain, Cebuanos learn to use olive oil, chorizo bilbao, and consume dairy products. He has also learned to saute. From them, the Cebuanos have appropriated dishes like calios, lengua, relleno, and the mixing of vegetables and meat. From China, influences in food only actually entered in the latter half of the 19th century. The Chinese introduced noodles, lugao, soy sauce, bean curd, sesame oil, dried mushrooms, and new cooking like steaming and stir-frying. The Cebuano, however, does not merely copy. Instead, he adapts. He adjusts them according to what suits him. So what is created is a hybrid type reminiscent of its foreign influences, but definitely Cebuano. Video about our Cebuano dishes and delicacies from Gabi Isa Kabilin. So we are very also happy and excited to uh, announce the winners of our trivia quiz. Um, and after this, we will have our question and answer with Professor Rolly after we announce. So thank you very much for those who were listening uh, prop, uh, carefully to our presentation, to our conversation, our cooking demo. So we are excited to, we are very happy to announce to you the winners of our trivia quiz. Well, I drum roll yeah. <laughs> so the winner of the first question, the first trivia question. So the question was, what was the staple food of Cebu in 1521? And the answer is, the correct answer is millet or kabog. And congratulations to our winner, Stephanie Tupis for answering correctly that question. Congratulations. You will have our free Food for Heroes dish. So you would just choose from those dishes. And then, of course, you can have an Abdik Pasquila free delivery. So congratulations, um, uh, Stefan, Stefan Chupis. Stefan Chupis. Kung ni pagka-spelling. So our second our second winner, the winner of our, question, our trivia quiz number two. So the question of that is, um, name two ingredients in the humba dish that have Chinese origin. And our winner is Chris Imea Ruales. Congratulations, Chris Imea Ruales. You win this heritage items, a coconut coin purse, and a... Kubing, a native musical instrument. Congratulations for listening and watching our cooking demonstration. Our third winner this afternoon, the one who answered the third trivia question. Our third trivia question is, was what beverage was Rahu Mabun drinking when Magellan first met him? And the correct answer to that is tuba. Unsa pay lain. So tuba, he was drinking tuba. And congratulations to our winner, Pung, Pungas, Pungas, Bell Donna. <laughs> Punga, Pungasi, uh, Bell Donna, Donna Bell Pungasi. Uh, congratulations for being the winner of our third question, and you win a free book, uh, Leon Kilap, The Untold Story of the 
1898 Cebu Revolution. Congratulations for winning this book. So have fun reading about Leon Quilat and the exciting story of how they defeated the Spaniards in the 1898 Cebu Revolution against Spain. So the next, our grand winner for this afternoon for, the, for our trivia question. Name three health boosting ingredients of the Tauso dish Pyanggang. Of course, you were watching the cooking demonstration by Chef Nico. I'm sure you're able to answer this and congratulations to the first one who gave the correct answer. Resti Ayoste Uzon. Congratulations, Resti, for answering the question correctly and you will win an overnight stay in the rooms in a room for Euro, Lawak Hamugawai of the only heritage hotel in Cebu. Pangrass. So congratulations to our winners. And now we go to our, our question and answer uh, open forum or Q&A portion of those who want to, to, to give their questions to Professor Rolly, uh, to our chef or to everyone. So congratulations to the winners. So now it's time for the question. So from Malu Aloro. Hi Malu. So she is also our, our, uh, a heritage advocate, and she wrote, she co-wrote this play, uh, uh, Abdik Paskila play. Ang question ni Malu is, ang utang bisaya, ang bi, ang utang, professor, ang utang bisaya ba, dapat na-adjud na'y kamungay? <laughs> so, uh, professor, murag, ang question. Okay, murag, murag mo man gin na ang kamungay, ang, ang uh, original na to, nga pang ang sakot sa otan sa atong mga atong mga sudan kay in, in fact na uh, it's too widespread na kamunggay ang uban na kalamunggay malunggay or something like that mao na murag ang pinaka common kaayo nga leaf vegetable nga atong isagol sa atong uh, uh, mga sudan nya hatokan pa butangan nimo ka malunggay og 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 hatok lami kaayo ang sabaw ko sa pagkaon Oo. So ang ang utang bisaya na agi kamunggay kung ang mga customer diri sa Pamgrass if ma, magpadala kag utang bisaya nila and then gamay ra kamunggay reklamo da ako okay da reklamo di sila musugot ang mga Cebuano di musugot og utang bisaya gaway kamunggay so naagi kamunggay og alugbati ang utang bisaya so napay ubang mga dahon og root crops ang ang, ang utang bisaya so daghang salamat Malu for your for your question. So, do you have other questions uh, for uh, Professor Rolly so, from our audience? So, I another question from Banet, Banet Colminares. So, there is a question for you, Professor. Um, uh, for us, this, there's a question for us about earlier, it was noted that pig was considered unclean. So, kisa may nag-consider sa pig as a different religion. And therefore, had to have some ritual done by women. I will not be surprised because if the Sultanate of Sulu was Muslim in those times, they don't eat pork. Could I ask the source about the ritual of, of the pig? Thank you. So thank you, Vanet, for your question. So Professor Rolly would ask, uh, would answer your question. So of course, that ritual of the pig is from the Chronicles of Pigafetta. He described it. So uh, Professor, the question is, um, why would they have a ritual on the pig? Actually, I'm going to... Mao uh, nang akong uh, uh, I I've been trying to figure out nganong do na sila pig sacrifice ritual pag abot sa Pigafita expedition dia sa Cebu. Uh, siguro do na po to sila ilang insecurities sa sa pag abot sa mga foreigners. So naghimo gyud to, to sila sa og og kanang nga, nga, nga ritual sa dia sa ila not only to not Although murag wonderful kaya nga nakita si Pigafita nga doon na nga ritual, I think it was really more of, a, 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 of a, an effort to appease their own uh, native spirits. No? Mm -hmm. So, so, so dagang, uh, dagang salamat, Professor, for, for, um, for uh, your thoughts about that ritual. So according to the Chronicles of Pigafetta, he said nga, the, the Cebuanos cannot eat the pork or the, the, 
pork unless there was a ritual. So there was a presence of a Muslim at the time, but there uh, it was uh, there was a Muslim advisor of Rahu Mabun, according to Pigafetta, Rahu Mabun would listen to him. But of course, according also to some other historians, the Cebuanos are so hard to convert. They were not converted to the Muslim uh, religion at the time or the Islam religion at the time. Kay, they already have a, a strong um, a pantheon of beliefs. So according to Dr. Isil Moares, it was not easy to convert. It was not easy to convert the, the Cebuanos. Kay. We already had, or the early Cebuanos, or the pre-colonial Cebuanos, had a, uh, they had their beliefs on the Anitos. But of course, the, it's another story. Uh, the wife of Rahum Abun loved the Santo Nino. So it became her favorite among all her Anitos, among all the images in her altar. So another question. Thank you, Vanessa, for that uh, qu question and for the answer, uh, Professor Rolly. Another question from our audience, from Paul. Uh, Asa man ang mga torta nga influence? Professor Rolly, asa ko nun yung influence sa torta? I'm not very sure, but the word torta is Spanish. <laughs> so uh -oh. Spanish, Spanish so, is uh -oh. So there, there are also discussions about that, nga ang torta, daghag egg yolk, di ba? Yeah. So because at that time, sa katong pagtukod na sa mga stone churches, they would use the egg white para okay, sa mga uh, structures. Na ay mabilin egg yolk, nga daghang egg yolk. So, they need to use it kung ang torta. Asa may daghang torta sa, sa Argao, di ba? Yan ay nice. Asa ba? Asa bang sikat niya torta? <laughs> sa sa Argao, and then na ay nice simbahan dito. Then, so, na ay torta, na kaya na ay ang egg yolk is mao ang usaka ingredient. Pero, nasa yung mga torta, di ba? Nga, tuba sa gihapon ang gipatubo sa torta. So, gisagol na na ang lain ng mga influences sa torta. So, thank you for that question, Paul. Uh, I hope you are satisfied with our answer. So, another question from Moni. Moni G. Moni. Um, question. How did the pre-colonial Cebuanos or the pre-colonial natives or the natives in our islands drink? How did the natives in our island Drink out for my Filipinos in pre-colonial times. So they are natives of in our. So what, how did they drink, Professor Raleigh? How did our our um, natives uh, ancestors nato drink? Okay, ang diya sa Cebu, ang sa Cebu na sila yu sa kajar mo ragarapon sa siguro nga jar nga na ibutangan nila o kanang Ridam, ang akong kuha na nga, gama, gagmay na nga baga kay, ilag yung straw, straw, murag straw ang paggamit sa pag-inom nila sa tuba diya sa Cebu. Pero dito sa sa Limasawa, nag-inom si, uh, si Kulambo o si, uh, si Pigafita, doon na to'y kuhan, murag Chinese porcelain cup. Chinese porcelain cup nga, ang usa ka, ang usa ka tasa si Pigafeta lang og si Colombo uh, ang makainom. Pero ang uban sa dito murag na sila murag na sila like cup na uh, Chinese porcelain. Pero ang dia sa Cebu yeah. klaro dito nga naagibutangan na daan og straw uh -huh. Ang uh, So si um, no. So do na ay mga mga Chinese porcelain diri sa Cebu at that time kay we had trade with the Chinese. Uh -huh. Pero ganahan lang gyud sila mag straw sa tuba. Ingon sila sa mga pala, kusag nyo inom, kung istro ni mo ang tuba, dali ka mahubog. So, we, we, all, we also had a tuba drinking contest, diri, uh, 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 last year. Grabe ang idaog, at to kay, akong igagaw nga taga-summer, babay, siya ay babay among all. Grabe ni mga taga-summer, may inom ang tuba, ha? Nag-straw, gistro ang tuba. Pasta sa may inom sa taga-summer, ay akong igagaw. Siya agad mo ni daog. Congratulations. A professor ha kay ang Eastern Visayas pasog yun ba? Ayun mo inom o tuba. Bisan diri sa Cebu ng straw, ang taga taga late nga nag nag straw sa Eastern uh, taga taga late, taga summer nga nag straw sa tuba. Pas pas kay mo inom o eh. Siya yun yung daog. So, the straw ni ang ilang gamit nga straw is reed. So, we we showed that in our gabi sa kabilin last year nga we had our version of the reed nga straw. Murag, buwan mo tingali ito? Lubi? Aw, oh, katong lukay no? Gimong straw? sa sa taga gaming na bartender so 
we would uh, na ako may ubang pamutan din ha. So is there another question from our uh, audience? So oh ni ni comment diri si si Henny Colina ong oh, Walay lami ang tuba istro hod. Ay nakasulay na kahedi sa tuba lang istro. So, musulay niya ta ana. Ni nanguta niya si Stellar Kabagi. Nga na sa Cebu, Cebu, Cebura ang naay puso or hanging rice. So, murag dili ra man sa Cebu. Oh, ikaw, uh, professor, would you like to answer this question? Why is it that it is only in Cebu with puso and they translated puso into a hanging rice? Di musugot ang ubang mga tao ani. To, to, to translate it into hanging rice. Sige, Professor, would you like to answer this question? Nga no, ko no, wala diha sa imong screen. Ang, ang, ang question is, nga nung sa Sibura man na ay puso? Burag doon na sa, burag doon na, doon na po sa Limasawa. Wa kaya nga ni maka-describe uh -huh. si, uh, si Pigafita Ana. Kaya, wa siguro to si makita nga, nga lukay ang gi, ang gi putos. Basta ang, ang kuan lang niya, nga doon ay rice, nga one cup, Unya pila to ka mga sagi nga pabalyuan unta sa taga Limasawa o uh, Kutsilyo. Pero murag dunay dunay puso dito sa Limasawa nga nakita ng ang mga Spaniards. Dili so, um, lang sa Cebu. Uh, 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 professor uh, was professor from Cebu Normal University who also have a book about uh, a study about this. Na until today na ay daghan nga klase nga, nga puso. Ang palm leaf is actually palm leaf art is a is, uh, uh, is common in our islands in in the Philippines. So we also have uh, a study of that and we have we have we know nga uh, in pre-colonial times puso was used as a as an offering to the Anitos for good harvest and all other wishes that they wanted from the Anitos, ang puso, mo'y, it's sacred, ang puso, at uh, in, in pre-colonial times. So, uh, we have here another, do we have a time for more questions? So, another question from, from Gab, kanilang ako makita andere sa akong kuan, uh, from Gabriel, nga no sa Sibulay, atong adobo kay dry, but sa Tagalog, kay na ay sabaw nga no nga ang kung ang adobo nga term kung diri sa Cebu mo ihong gikag adobo diri sa Cebu uga na siya kana nang murag humba pero gi pauga pero kung didto ka sa sa Manila or sa Tagalog ang ilang ang ilang ang ilang adobo is is kanang kanang basa murag humba nga walay sige Professor Dakay kasulti ana nga no nga uga diri sa Cebu ang adobo pero adobo Manila Uh, ang pinaka basic man god sa adobo pag marinate no man adobar to marinate so dinhi sa ato mura regional differences na na nga dinhi uga dito basa kayo ang uban may sabaw pero ang pinaka na nam regional differences na na pero ang tawon na siya long ha ay marin marinate ha to marinate so adobar is to marinate so sa sa tagalog ang ilang ang ilang adobo ang ato diri humba pero ang atong ang ilang adobo mo ato humba pero ang atong humba dunay black beans o o tamis-tamis uh, 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 siya na siya ay asukar so mo na siya nun ay chinese influence ang hmm. ang of course ang ang adobo sa sa mga tagalog naga po soy sauce so mo na siya nun ay difference ang <laughs> ang humba <laughs> sa So we, we, we can entertain just, I think, uh, two more questions uh, from our audience. So um, uh, according to my comment there in Henry Colina uh, during sa, the Professor Dr. Ray in a CN Katakong who has studied about Puso, he used Puso as a decoration. And there is a palm grass, we always use Puso uh, in our centerpiece table. As at table centerpiece when you have Um, when we have event, uh, events or celebrations. So, na ay question diri nga uh, uh, na pa question? Na pa mo question din ha? Pwede ba na to, ni, according to our um, kanang top fan na to sa Palm Grass who is always uh, uh, with us in our kanang mga events, uh, Maria Teresa Cardenas Lanit. She, she is also a heritage advocate. Ang question niya, Hello, Sir Rolly. Um, pwede ba nato ma-generalize ang Cebuano cuisine? Or is it a perfect example of fusion cuisine? Is it a fusion cuisine? Uh, Doon na tayo, do tayo basic nga 
doon na po tayo fusion cuisine. Sa akong gimension na, ang tuba na gisagula na og chocolate at Spanish influence, gisagula na og uh, itlog o milk uh, o gatas, mo na ang kotil, mo na ng uh, fusion of, of uh, original tuba plus two sets of colonizers. Ano? Ang kinang atong Spanish, <laughs> Spanish ang humba, dili lang na Spanish, dili lang po na, doon na na Chinese na nagkasagol-sagol na ang ingredients. Pero ang na, nasa'y original, ang kanang inununan, original ginawa, gini nasagol nga inchik o uh, Espanyol o no? Amerikano. Doon na, doon ay fusion, doon na po original. No? So muna siya ang, 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 ang tubag ni Professor Rolly, uh, Maria, I hope you are um, we answered your question. So we would like to get a closing uh, closing statement from our historian, um, prof our resource person, Professor Rolly, uh, as we uh, end this uh, question and answer po uh, portion of our event. Okay. Dagang salamat sa pag na ako na ining uh, programa. Uh, it was a very challenging thing to research about the uh, uh, food uh, food uh, during the Spanish era kay may man natataw gira ang gi research pero kini pagkaon no? anyway it's, it's challenging at it, it provided a new facet to to my research and writing and mao ma na ang naka in, naka instigate sa ako kini nga uh, pagimbita ra ning programa i will uh, present the same uh, essentially the same uh, lecture uh, next week sa kanan ni National Quincentennial Committee uh, theorizing uh, Magellan's the Visayan food at Magellan 8. So, daghang salamat. Morag na nakapractice ko din hi karon aning programa ha sa akong lecture. Thank you. Oh, for showing us 24 dishes today. Kaysa mo tabang o kaon aning 24 dishes. So, dagang salamat sa atong crew nga na diri kuyog dato karon si atong engineering and IT nga team uh, who who help us with this and thank you for the gabi sa kabilin crew. And then to everyone of you who are with us this afternoon, thank you for journeying with us sa atong culinary heritage for pagtilaw kuyog nga mo sa kalami sa atong kaagi nga makapabaskog nga naa di ay tay mga ingredients and our food items in Cebu naa ra sa atong palibot that can help us in this fight against this virus this pandemic nga naa di tay mga healthy food sa atong traditional Cebuano dishes that we need to to um we need to recall and we need to use again and we need to to cook and to prepare again and and use this for us to uh, to boost our immune system and to boost our health against this pandemic for us to fight as one and to heal as one so daghang salamat and congratulations to the winners of our trivia quiz and there is another trivia quiz after this uh, after this event and then we would like to thank uh, professor Rolly. thank you sa crew sa gabi sa kabilin and then to to everyone to chef and to 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 our graphic graphics artists our video consultants dagang salamat and i would like to turn you over to our um uh, gabi sa kabilin events our organizer heidi padapar dagang salamat uh, uh miss agrippina that was actually what they presented this afternoon was a feast for the eyes, hopefully, mahimo yung feast of the palate and stomach soon when the quarantine is lifted. Thank you, Palm Grass, for preparing the food showcase this afternoon. Twenty-four dishes. Murag na horot yun og feature ang tibuok menu sa Palm Grass. Lingaw ko kay together with the names of the dishes offered by Palm Grass, we also learned about bits of background about our Cebuano heroes. But definitely, we learned so many things today, especially food during the pre-colonial and at the onset of Spanish colonization. For example, ang kana de ngalan nga lamaw, di na de ay bahog sa baboy, no? Baboy de ay na nga makaon. Onya, we are we are also reminded about the wonders of the coconut, especially the virgin coconut oil. Um, we Rafi would like to express, and the BE is a feeling actually, organizing committee would like to express its gratitude to the following 
for our second GSK um, online event. Palm Grass, the Heritage Hotel, for hosting the GSK online activity this July, particularly Miss Agrippina Hevelondo. Guest resource person, Dr. Rolando Borinaga, Chef Nico, I can charge Danilo, GSK point person, Casey, and all the Palm Grass production crew behind the scenes. We'd also like to thank Dr. Jose Eliazar Barsales of USC Museum for the guidance, Miss Maria Cecilia Cabanes of Museo Subo for being part of the core committee for GSK online. For the Rafi, uh, Kabilin Center, the Kabilin Center Organizing Committee of Gabi is a Kabilin. We would like to acknowledge also the help of Mr. Cedric de la Cruz of AEV, who runs our, who is our backup, and our second backup, uh, who are uh, Jade and company of the uh, Rafi IT team. And for our marketing and promotions, our CHOA, CRM, and Rafi BDG teams. We would like to remind uh, everyone who are still tuning in, for those who want to get an e-certificate for participating in this event, Please make sure you fill out the you filled out the registration form and fill out the evaluation form posted after. There's also, like mentioned a while ago, there's a trivia right after we go off the air. We continue to win prizes after in the GSK FB page. There's also the GSK Kids contest. Um, the mechanics are already out, so uh, please check it out for kids who want to participate. And don't forget, the next GSK online activity is on August 28th. I think, but there's, I think we're going to be adding one more activity before the August 28th. But the August 28th online activity will be on Visayan tattooing and tattoo designs. And please follow the GSK FB page for our weekly bite-sized knowledge on Cebuano culture and heritage. Dagang salamat sa tanan nga ni Apil o ni Tambong sa atong ikaduha nga gabi sa Kabilin online activities. Labi na sa atong mga students and teachers from the different universities and schools. Our Cebu tour guides, the heritage enthusiasts and local heritage community here in Cebu. And of course, our GSK 2020 partner museums and heritage sites. I hope you enjoyed our activity for July. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye. Again, thank you so much for your valuable time and for participating in our second online activity. We hope to see you again next month for another engaging event to appreciate and experience Cebu's culture and heritage. Only be right, the BBC Cabin 2020 Online Activities. Have a good day!